Assalamu alaikum. Hello and welcome to the weekly podcast of actionradius.com. Today we will be talking about the beautiful Paris. Paris Hilton, but the Neo Paris City set 70 years in the future in the video game Remember Me by Capcom. Now you may have seen that how we share every part of our life with our friends and families via social networks like Facebook, Twitter, <coughs> Google Plus, and uh, now this game shows an evolution from this system that the people's desire to share more and more part of their personal life with their loved ones now they have developed a technology to share memories with them the game shows that one company memorize has monopolized the control of these memories now since they control all the memories they store all the memories of the people they also have the control of influencing them and that's why they have created a surveillance state. Now in such a surveillance state, we can always expect revolutionaries to come up also. And in this game, they are called the terrorists. This is where you as Nilan come in, as you play the part of one of the most gifted terrorists there is to be. And that is why the memorize really loathe you. In the start of the game, Nilan does get caught and has most of her memories wiped out, where you start from a state of amnesia, given a cliche for start of most of the games, but in this one it just makes sense since it's all about memories here. She will be guided by one of her old colleagues, Edge, to escape, sport the errorous cause as well as later on steal back her own memories just to find out why the state considers her so dangerous. The story of the game is truly gripping and unique in many manners and just one of the many things that shine out in this game. The gameplay involves game being broken into regular button mashing hack and slash elements to more adventurous platforming and wall scaling activities. First, regarding the combat of the game. The game is a pure blood button mashing. The enemies are very strong and will take a bit of your time to knock them out as compared to the health of enemies in regular games. For me it was uncomfortably long just so that you can get a few more hours of gameplay as you would be spending so much time doing this. The multi-enemy combat works well, much like what you might have seen in games like Batman Arkham City. And I do mean it in a good way. There is no target lock buttons which I just hate in games. Instead the game uses a more logical approach that if you start beating someone they become the target lock target unless you dodge and move away. Nilin is very acrobatic and you can jump from enemy to enemy, jump over their heads to dodge. The enemy danger indicator are a nice touch to easily identify when to dodge. The combat looks very slick. Although she may not have a ver as much variety of moves as Batman, but it's still pretty entertaining to watch her. Nilin also has some special abilities which can be activated for massive damage, but these do come with a cooldown. Later on, she will also get augmented range firing, also which once again requires no aiming but auto locks on best targets. But the real innovation comes from the customizable combo system. There are three different key combinations and you can define how each key press from that combination works out. You have a pool of abilities like heal, lower cooldown, power attack etc. From that pool you can assign the power to your combo. To give an example, you can configure that on simple 3 punch combo, the second punch gives you health while the third punch load downs your special ability cooldown. You can anytime reconfigure them so as to customize them for each type of fight or mini bosses. 
even though the standard enemy types are two leapers and guards but there are sub varieties in them leapers are the addicts of the city who have been deformed with their constant consumption of memories and still want more those uh, these you will face in the slums of the city while the guards are armor wearing government stooges you get to face in the richer districts only two base varieties are a bit disappointing but thankfully they do have sub varieties for example some leapers have the ability to disappear in the dark while the guards on the guard side you may find guards have a shield which require ranged attack first to destroy the shield first and then you can attack them there are many mini boss fights as well as big boss fights to keep things fresh and to keep things more entertaining than just those two default uh, enemy types when it comes to the adventure element of the gameplay just like at the heart of combat it is a very simplistic gameplay element with a layer of minor additional details same holds true for adventuring elements in the game also we live in an age where games like assassin's creed have raised the bar on how you should traverse through the cityscapes nelen on the other hand feels like a 7 year old prince of persia in that manner where there is only one right path to go on even though architecturally there may be many ledges many places to jump to but nelen can never go there only the linear path is always highlighted with an on-screen help indicator to tell you which ledge is grabable and just so that you keep pressing forward and just jump from one ledge to another one till you reach the end there may be some simplistic timing based platforming required but it's nowhere near a 7 year old prince of persia even in which going from pawn point a to b proved to be rewarding effort in remember me it's all a piece of cake and thus never as rewarding the last element of gameplay comes from memories one is remembrance where nilin can steal someone's memory and use it to help her see guards patrol patrons or open doors which they had opened earlier on other is the memory remix ability which you can uh use like a director of a movie going through a scene in which you can rewind and forward and just change some bit of details around the room which will influence the characters differently and thus changing how someone remembers the event do note that this does not mean that you can change the past but only how someone remembers it for example if someone was killed he will still be killed but you can change how someone remembers that who or how he was killed and thus influencing the results in your favor this gameplay element is one of the most unique and best features of the game sadly these are very limited instances where you would be required to remix the memories now coming to the visuals of the game this is where the game shines at it's not the unreal engine 3 graphics that i want to appreciate but the architect is what needs to be appreciated inspired from paris grunt architect but overhauled with the cyberpunk and futuristic approaches the game city looks just grand it's beautiful and the game never shies away from showing that strong part of it the neon lit slums to marketplace everything in the city looks beautiful but the more modern and rich districts like st mikhail are the ones that are breathtaking sadly the game is just painfully linear there are so many times you would wish you could climb to some vintage point and take a look around but not even an extra route or a corridor exists there are only linear single track pathways all around the city some of the later levels like sewer subways or prison architect may fall down from the standard that this video game shows in other levels to the normal level design but the city levels are pretty beautiful the music of the game deserves special appreciation also 
It's all futuristic Daft Punk style electronic music but rather than boring flatline soundtracks these music have those digital glitches and scratches like an audible representation of the visual style of the game. It's not your typical music as if the game sound effects are remixed with the music to create a more homogeneous ingredient for your gameplay. In other games music may be just for ambience. Here the music rises above the background level and becomes part of your visual sense too. Overall, this is a very ambitious game from Capcom, giving you some of the most unique game setting ever seen in a game storyline. Then the most beautiful architecture we have seen in a modern day game. But its only letdown is of course its repetitive combat and simplistic platforming. That's why we give it 6.5 out of 10. Coming to the weekly giveaways, our last week winner for a copy of Fireburst is Ali Farhan84. Congratulations! You can contact us to receive your free Steam gift of Fireburst. Now, for this week giveaway, we have a copy of Nuclear Dawn. This is an RTS FPS hybrid game for multiplayer gamers out there. And to win this, you have to answer a simple question that which is the thinnest gaming laptop yet announced? I will give you a hint it is a laptop announced by Razer. If you don't know the answer to this question, you can always find it on our blog where we recently featured this laptop. So, once you find that answer, give it in the comments below, and next time you could be the winner nuclear dawn that's it for this week uh, see you next week hopefully inshallah till then take care allah hafiz assalamu alaikum